What's up guys, my name is Steven Guadagni of 5 Tool Sports Science. I wanted to do a video breakdown of the little leaguer who threw 82 miles per hour. Um, his first name is Fawn. I'm not going to try to pronounce the rest of his name. I'm too afraid I'm going to butcher it. But uh, he hit 82 miles per hour, which I, I'm not sure it might be the hardest pitch ever thrown uh, in the Little League World Series. But I wanted to do uh, a breakdown on his mechanics because he's doing some pretty impressive things. Um, that I think a lot of the young kids that I train, uh, I did a breakdown with them in one of our training camps of just what he was doing and they loved it. So I think it would be a, a good educational tool for other uh, little leaguers out there uh, on kind of what he is doing elite in his mechanics. Uh, and then just a little bit of background um, on who he is as a player. Uh, not much on it, but there was a little bit from his coach. So he's five foot eight, 164 pounds. Okay, he's 12 years old. Um, his coach said that he has, I'm going to try not to butcher it, but it, it was a quote, he has the speed, the coordination, and the jumping ability, um, and he has a very promising career in baseball and he just hopes that he doesn't get injured. So it was a really short quote, but it gives you some insight. He said he's one of the most athletic guys that he's ever seen. So you know right off the bat, he's quick. He's athletic, he's got the jumping ability, he's got the coordination. So everything that we kind of preach to our younger, our younger clients, and even our older clients, all the way up to the professional level, it's about developing the athlete, developing the speed, developing the strength, developing the power, the mobility, the coordination, that all goes into uh, uh, you know, being a high level player, being a healthy high level player. Uh, okay, so let's go uh, right into his pitching mechanics. Some of the good things he does. So this is just like he's already gone through handbrake. He went to a high leg lift and got into uh, got into his kind of load, his hinge position, whatever you guys want to call it. Okay, so really good job sinking into his hips, loading into that backside, getting his force vector, uh, starting to get aligned. Another thing is he keeps this front side close, so he's keeping that coil in his hips as he starts moving down the mound. Okay, let me go next frame here. So. Right off the rip, he starts going into horizontal induction. You can see how far this arm starts to pull back behind his body. Okay, so he really starts to pull in the horizontal abduction, and he's already going to start leveraging, you know, his hips and his shoulders. So he's creating some uh, some stretch and separation through his core as he goes through that handbrake. All right, let's try to go a little bit further. Oops, right there. Okay. So this is when he's getting into front foot strike. I'm gonna go actually a little frame back here. This is really to me like the bread and butter of what he's doing at 12 years old. That's incredibly impressive. Uh, is his ability to go from this load position to rotation of the pelvis and get that pelvis completely open as he gets into front foot strike. Okay, so he starts to begin to rotate that pelvis open All right, let me get him into foot strike, so I don't want to skip too many frames. We might get a better shot over here. Okay, this is his 82 mile per hour throw. So you can see he gets that hip all the way open, then he keeps those shoulders all the way closed. All right, so you can see, you can see just the torque that he's creating. As he's powered that hip all the way open, he's keeping his shoulders delayed, He's just creating all this separation through his core, all this torque, okay? So he's landed at front foot strike. On this image, you can see he's still got horizontal abduction. He's still keeping his, his trunk closed all the way into foot strike. So you can see the torque from the front foot all the way up to the arm, okay? Uh, one area that he could probably get better at is his front leg. I think he does a good job of decelerating his pelvis, meaning he stops the linear momentum, okay? And that allows his trunk, which we'll see next, to play catch up and, and really create a lot of trunk angular velocity, whip that trunk and ultimately whip the arm. But uh, he could do a better job of getting some extension from that front leg and start kind of feeding energy back up into the trunk um, where that front, uh, that front knee really starts to get some extension. Uh, okay, so that has a high length to ball velocity. Again, he's throwing 82 at 12. It's not like he really needs much more velocity at this age. It's more about keeping him healthy. But um, there has been some studies that kind of showed some knee extension uh, correlating with uh, uh, arm health as well. So let's look next at, okay. He gets his arm landed. This is another key point. Deep and flipped up. So we can see how deep and flipped up his arm is. 
He's created all this separation. He's powered his hips open, so he's peaked the angular velocity through his pelvis, okay? So when we look at the kinematic sequence, we're gonna look at, you know, let's call this, you know, his pelvis, oops. Pelvis, sorry for my terrible handwriting. Okay, trunk, all right, and then his arm, okay? So peaking up the pelvis, he's done that, all right? The next segment would be we wanna peak the trunk, If I can get it to cooperate, that would be great. Come on now. Come on, little buddy. There we go. Okay. The trunk starts to peak. As that trunk peak, the arm goes into external rotation. Okay, starts to go into layback. Get even one more frame forward. Uh, it's too far. I guess it's going to skip, but he does get pretty good layback. I would say he gets a little bit more than what's being shown here because it's just skipping frames. But he gets, he gets better layback in that arm to where he's probably more around the 170 to 180 degrees. So that's another link, one to ball velocity. But it's just a good sign of uh, you know, his arm accepting the, the transfer of momentum from the trunk to the arm to then funnel out to the baseball. Okay, so he's peaked his pelvis, he peaks his trunk, and then that final link, he's gonna peak his arm. Right there, goes into that ball release. Okay, so things he could probably do better, like we talked about, just more extension from that front leg. You can see when that ball is getting out of his hand, he's still kind of throwing off a little bit of a bent front leg back there. Um, not the end of the world because, like I said, I think he decelerates his pelvis well or he wouldn't be throwing 82. So he does a good job of stopping the linear momentum. He's just not getting a lot of that extension to push energy back up into the trunk. All right, he does a pretty good job of getting some forward trunk tilt. That's going to be associated with ball velocity. Uh, so that's good. Um, going farther back, I mean, at the foot strike right here, I mean, very slightly, maybe a little bit of glove side pull. I'm, I'm nitpicking here. Like, that's barely, like, barely getting some pull, and if we had a side view, we'd be able to get a little bit better uh, view of how his arm is going through, but he might get, you know, a little bit of hyperangulation, a little bit of arm drag, but I, again, like I'm kind of nitpicking, I don't have side view, so uh, arm drag or hyperangulation can just be a little st uh, tough on the shoulder, can be hard on the UCL, so essentially when your arm, the elbow is just way too far behind your scapular plane as you go through shoulder rotation. So again, he's, you know, does a pretty good job, I think, of letting it ride along with this trunk. I'm just nitpicking a little bit here. But for a 12 year old, I mean, really impressive stuff. He's, you know, creating a lot of hip to shoulder separation at front foot strike. You see him when he gets into that front foot, he's completely peaked his pelvis open. We can get to that position, boom. Eh, one more frame back. Okay, he hits. Bam. I mean, those hips are just completely open. On top of he's keeping that trunk pretty closed. You can just see the amount of torque and stretch, the stretch shortening cycle he's creating through the trunk. Okay. Um, and then he just does a really good job of letting the rest of that sequence unfold. Hips go first, trunk, and then to the arm. At 12 years old, that's really, really impressive. On top of that, he's five foot eight, 164 pounds. That like, I have high schoolers who aren't 164 pounds. So a 12 year old at 164 pounds, you look like he's got pretty good muscle mass at that age. His coach already told you he can jump. Uh, he's one of the most athletic guys that he's seen. He's got the coordination, all right? You can see it here. This coordination and this timing of movement for 12 years old is elite, like for any level. For the pelvis to be that open, the trunk to be that closed, the arm to be flipped up and on time at front foot strike, that just shows you like his body is just ready to receive that energy and just become reflexive at that point and let everything unfold. So let the trunk catch up to the hips, let the arm catch up to the trunk and just everything launches out, okay? So that is a really elite sequence for a 12 year old. Um, pretty impressive. So. The other thing is it's just like it kind of shows you how much the game has evolved that we're seeing a trickle down effect of velocity 
uh, even to the little league level. Like we're seeing all time highs in baseball of 100 mile per hour arms and the, the average velocity just ticking up year after year after year from every level, from college level to high school level, all the way down to like the little league level, level that just early specialization, strength and conditioning, understanding of biomechanics is increasing velocity. But the question for the industry is gonna be like, just like what his coach said, he just wants them to be healthy. You know, the, the arm injury rates are just through the roof, man. It, uh, last year in the MLB, 49% of starters spent time on the injured list, uh, and it equivalated to $486 million in money spent on players that were injured. You know, that's, that's almost half a billion dollars, guys. That's crazy. Don't even get me started about the high school, college, all the way down to little league injury rates. So definitely need be, needs to be more of an emphasis on, yes, velocity is great, it's awesome, it's cool, but we gotta do a better job of keeping these kids healthy and keeping the professional guys healthy. Uh, that's really the next, I think, forefront of uh, the baseball industry is kind of solving this, uh, this injury epidemic problem. So if you followed along this long, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, uh, like, share. Uh, it really means the world to me. And uh, we'll hope to see you guys next time. See you.